Good evening, ladies. Hello, hello. We have made it through 37 days of Lent. Praise God. This has been a major blessing. I believe that so many people have gotten transformation. Just going along and um, being close to the Lord has been wonderful. Thank you, Shelby. Thank you, Apostle Shelby. I pray you're having fun. I pray that you have a safe trip. Safe travels. Love you. Praise the Lord. Hello, hello. Praise God. So I um I'm so excited that we have made it this far in this walk, um, getting close to the Lord, consecrating ourselves to God in um, a mighty way and just seeking God first. Exhausted from traveling, but excited to be here. Love you all. Amen. I'm excited you there. This is transformation about to take place in, this, in, these, in these church streets, <laughs> these kingdom streets. Praise God. Um, <laughs> thank you, Lord. So I'll just open us up in prayer, um, before we get into the word, uh, thank you, Apostle Shelby for opening the door for us to be able to have this, uh, prayer for us to be able to come together and, uh, just spend this time with the Lord and spend the time in the word. So, uh, I'll go ahead and open us in prayer. Father, we just Thank you for this time, Father. We thank you for the time that we've been able to spend coming together, Lord. We thank you for the revelation that you have given us up into this point, Lord. We thank you for your word, Father, that goes through us, that goes before us, that we are standing on, the word that we are standing on. Father, your word is the foundation that has established this earth. And everything we stand on and everything we see has been created and founded by your word. And so we praise you, God. We praise you that it is only by your might and by your power that things are created. Things are formated in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for who you have called us to be. We thank you for translating each and every one of us out of the kingdom of darkness and over into the kingdom of light where we prosper, where we see clearly, Lord. We thank you that you have opened the eyes of our understanding, that they have been enlightened, that we are able to see what it is that you have called us to do, who we are in Christ. And we just thank you that it is not by our own might, it's not by our own power, but it is by the spirit that is in us, Lord, for the gift of God that you have given us the gift of grace, the gift of salvation, the gift of the blessing, Father. We thank you that we are covered by the blessing, that there is a hedge of protection around us. Everywhere we go, that everything we do prospers, Lord. Everywhere we go and every place that we tread, Father, that you are with us. And so we thank you that your word says that you will never leave us, nor would you forsake us, Father. We come to you, Lord, with a repented heart for anything that we may have said, anything we may have done, Father, any thoughts that we may have entertained, Lord, that did not give glory to you, Father. We come to you purified by the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord, that your word has authority, first and final authority. We thank you that we walk today by faith, even in this time that we spend together, Father, we pray as we go into your word tonight, that your word will be opened unto us, Lord. Your word says that there are mysteries to be uncovered for us, Lord, that they are hidden for us, but not from us, Lord. We thank you that you have given us revelation of your word, God. We thank you that that revelation will open up new doors of opportunity, Father. We thank you that the favor, God, that you have placed on our lives will continuously allow us to dwell with you in every way, Father. And so we just praise you for who you are. We praise you for your mighty hand that is moving, Lord, even when we can't see it, Father. We thank you that we focus not on the things that are seen, but on the things that are unseen, Father, the things that we do not see because they are eternal, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that it is not by our own might. We thank you that it is not by our own power. We thank you that we do not move by our flesh, Father, but that we are moved by your spirit, God. And so as we go into your word tonight, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We come to you with praises in our hearts for who you are. We come to you thanking you that you have opened the eyes of our understanding, Father. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. We thank you that you continuously move. We come against any assignment of the enemy 
to keep us from receiving that which you have called us to. We come against any distractions in the name of Jesus. We come against any impure thoughts in the name of Jesus that may try to creep up on us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we cast you down, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Behold, we have been given the power to tread on, on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy that there is nothing that shall by any means hurt us. We thank you, Lord. That we rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto us, but we rejoice that our names are written in the heavens. Our names are written in the books that you have predestined us for this time, for a time such as this. And that it is not by our own works, but it was a gift, Father, that you loved us so much that you rescued us from the curse, from the power to fail in anything and everything, from poverty, from sickness, from disease. We come against it right now. It's ability to take place in our lives in the name of Jesus. We come against the illegal operation of poverty, of sickness and disease right now in the name of Jesus. We cast down any thoughts that we have entertained that do not align with your word, God. For you said that you would supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory, Father. You said that all grace would abound toward us. All favor, unmerited favor would abound toward us, that we would be sufficient, Father, in all things. And we pray tonight as we go into your word that the spirit of revelation will come upon us, Lord, that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened, Father, and that we would see, that we would know what it is that you have called us to do. We thank you that revelation is showing up for us through your word, God, that you would give to us next steps, Father, that you would give to us the wisdom, the knowledge and clarity of understanding, Father, of what to do, of how to move, Lord. We walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And so we just thank you, Lord, that this is a process, that we are growing, that you are not a respecter of persons, Father, but that you love us all. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that your favor is upon us as we move through your word today that we will get new revelations, Father, that will empower us to move forward. We thank you that we are not moved by time or effort, Father, but that we are moved by revelation of your word. And so we thank you, Lord, as we go into your word, we thank you for the revelation. We thank you for the knowledge. We thank you for clarity and wisdom. We thank you for your presence with us today. Holy Spirit, we invite you in to celebrate with us the victory of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight's scripture is the parable of the wise and the foolish builders. I'm going to uh, turn my camera on. Let me see if I can share my screen. Oh, snap. I can share my screen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Let me, Um, I'm going to pull it up on my screen. Okay. Y'all gonna have to bear with me. See if I can share. Okay. So you guys should be able to see my screen. And we are on the parable of the wise and the foolish builders. So the scripture is Matthew 7, 24 and 25 says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came, the rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Praise God. I want to read this in a couple other translations because I really, this is one of my favorite scriptures. One of my favorite scriptures because it's so mighty, it's so powerful and people um, don't really understand what it means to be built on a rock. What it means to be built on a rock. Um, so I'm going to actually read this in the um, New Living Testament. Praise the Lord. Um, I 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in the New Living, the word says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torments and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm going to read it in the Amplified. In the Amplified, it says, So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them, obeying them, will be like a sensible, prudent, practical, wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. Glory to God. There's a, I'm going to read it in a couple different translations. I'm going to read it in the CSB. And therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them, will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the rivers rose, the winds blew and pounded that house, yet it did not collapse because its foundation was on the rock. Thank you, Lord. And then in the message translation, it says, these words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are foundational words, words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who built his house on solid rock. Rain poured down, the rivers flooded, a tornado hit, but nothing moved that house. It was fixed to the rock. <laughs> Praise the Lord, that is so good hallelujah that is so good that is so good thank you lord thank you lord just god is just so good you know i read these uh scriptures and i think about the foundation of a house built on a rock you know we it's easy to think of that in layman's terms or in natural terms when we think of building a house, how it's on a foundation and you don't want it to be a slope, you don't want it to be moved, but to have your house built on a rock, what is the rock? You know, we can build a house. When you build something, what are you building your life on? The word says homeowner improvements to your standard of li living. These words are not just incidental additions. We don't just take these words and add these words to our lives. But we take these words and we totally make over our lives and who we are. They rebuild us. They recreate something. So it's like having a deconstruction ball that totally kills off the old version of who you were in order to reform who you are supposed to be and built on by way of having it built on the foundation, which is the rock that you build it on. So the rock is what you, we have to ask ourselves, what is the rock? What is this rock that I'm building a foundation on? Because the rock comes before the foundation. So what is the rock? So I, I want to take you over. And I love, I love this. This is one of my favorite scriptures because it's so mighty when you think about um the revelation that comes from it so if you go if you want to turn over with me I don't know if you guys are in your bible but if you want to turn over to Matthew 16 verse 13 it says when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciples saying who do men say that I the son of man am and they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but who do, 
who say you that I am? So who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my father, which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He said, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. But he said, thou art Peter and upon this rock. What is the rock? He said, upon this rock, it was, let's back up. Because he said, and Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. So what Peter said, apparently to Jesus was the rock. So what does that mean though? If you are to identify Jesus as being the Christ, what is Christ? Je Christ is not Jesus' last name, right? It's the anointed one and his anointing. He's the Messiah, the anointing of God that operates in you. So if Christ is in you, then you have the anointing of God in you. So if he said, you are the anointed one sent by God, you are the very son of the living God. He was able to identify with this. And Jesus said to him, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. So your natural self cannot identify with Jesus. It had to be given by way of revealed knowledge because he said, God revealed this to you who is in heaven. In heaven is something that you can't see with your natural eyes. So if you believe in Jesus, then something has been revealed to you in order for you to believe. Revealed knowledge is revelation knowledge. And revelation knowledge is different than informational knowledge that you have with your logical mind, but it's revelation revealed to you in the spirit and revelation is where he said, upon that rock, upon the revelation that you get of the word, upon the revelation that you get of your identity in Christ, or upon the revelation that you get of according to who you are, based on the anointing of God, the revelation that you have of the anointing of God. Well, what is the anointing of God? anointing is the yoke destroying power so the anointing of god is the yoke destroying power it's the very power of god that changes a situation that breaks or destroys something never to be re-put together so if i took a glass vase and i slammed it on the ground and it shattered into a million pieces and i shattered it it would never be able to be put back together in the same way. So it destroys never to be put back the yoke of bondage that we were in. That's what Jesus came to do when he, when he destroyed the yoke of bondage that the enemy had on us after Adam did what he did. That is revelation. That is the anointing of God. And when you believe in that anointing of God, that is the revelation that you have that you are moving on. The foundation, if you turn over to Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11 and one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the evidence, that Simon had of what he was not able to see with his natural eyes was substance. So he had a revelation and then that is where the substance comes from. The substance, the word substance is the word foundation. It's a assurance, it is the foundation. So faith is the foundation. 
So the thing that comes before you operate in faith is having a revelation of what God has revealed or shown to you about who he is and about who you are because Christ is in you. And so if we take this back to the scripture, everyone who hears the word of God and puts them to practice is like a wise man who built his life, who built his temple. The house is the temple. He built his temple. He was not conformed to this world. He was transformed by the renewing of his mind by hearing the word of God. And the word of God became the rock because he believed it. So when the rain came, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house when it tried to destroy your character, when it tried to destroy what God has built you up to be, you don't budge. Because when the word said to stand on the word, it says stand on his word, stand on what he has told you, stand on what he's revealed to you. Because it had its foundation, the foundation is faith. The foundation was built on that very word that was given to you, that was revealed to you, that was uncovered for you. And that is where we built from, the revelation that we get from the word. So when we're reading the word, it's not about reading it to get information. It's about dissecting it in the way that we just did, uncovering it. And peeling back the layers for the mysteries to be uncovered, as the word says. And we get revelation. We get knowledge. It feels like you're eating. Your soul man, your spirit man is eating. Your soul is being reformed. And you're eating. And your mind is being renewed. And when you get revelation of who God said, of the promises of God, of his words, that revelation builds something up in you because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word because the word brings revelation and revelation gives you faith in what was spoken because it was revealed to you. Hallelujah. And when it's revealed to you, then you can build your foundation on it because you know that it won't move. So uh, I'll give an example. If you're in a situation, and I like to use finances because it's something very apparent that we deal with, and um, it's almost something that all of us can relate to. If you're in a situation where you're believing God for for a financial increase to pay off a bill or to, to buy a house or for just a financial move, if you go in the scripture and you find a word of God where he said, that I will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. And he said, if you ask anything according to my word, then I hear you. And if you know that I hear you, then you know that you have the petition that you asked for. And then you realize he said, the Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. And out of the mouth of two or three witnesses <laughs> and two or three are gathered together. What does he say? The word should be established. So those are two or three scriptures out of his mouth. That's what he promised. So if we take those two and three scriptures and we put them together, then we are established. And so when we go to God and we pray and we say, Lord, you said in your word that you are my shepherd. I shall not want, I shall not decrease. I shall not lack. I shall want for nothing. You said in your word that you will supply all my needs according to your riches, not according to my bank account. Lord, you said in your word that if I would ask according to your word, and I know your word says that you desire for me to be sufficiently supplied for, then I know that you have all that I need. I know that I have all that I need because you said if I ask, then it is given unto me. And so I believe, I receive. He said, believe when you pray, then you shall receive it. Ask and it is given. Seek and you shall find. So we've asked, we believe, and now we believe that we received it because he said we have it. And we may not know how or where it's going to come from, but that revelation of the word was given unto us. And now we got faith because we're meditating on that word. We're continuously saying, thank you, Lord, that when I asked, you gave it and now I have it. 
even though we don't see it with our natural eyes because we look at the things that are not seen, not the things that are seen because the things that are seen are temporal. The things that are not seen are eternal. So if we're looking at our physical bank account and we're expecting to buy a house or we are expecting to pay the bill, then that's not our evidence. Because faith is the substance of what we're hoping for. And faith is the evidence of the what's not seen. So if you're looking at the thing that is temporal, then that bank account is subject to change. And God said you got it. He just didn't say when. And timing is not up to God. It's up to your faith. But your faith works in tandem with the word of God. Jesus said, it's not if I can do it. It's if you can believe. It shall be done unto you. And so with the faith that we have in the word or the revelation of the word that was given unto us, we can move forward because we are the just. We live by faith and we live from faith to faith. And so when we take this back to the scripture, when you're standing on a word of God and you're believing for anything that God spoke to you, when you hear the word, faith comes by hearing. The faith is built up in you. So the revelation is the rock and the faith is the foundation that you're building on. And then we know that we have whatever we say because he said it. And he is not like man that he shall lie. The word says that he is not a man that he shall lie. But if you look it up in the Greek or the Hebrew, it says he is not like a man that he shall lie. God does not have the capability to tell a lie, but it's important that we are established by the word. It's important that we put the word into practice. The word also says that if we hear it, we have a responsibility to do what we hear. Faith without works is dead, but faith, hallelujah, faith is the foundation that you build the house on. The works is the building of the house, but you can't build the house without faith. So even for a person that's newly saved, if you're trying to come out of sin, you can't keep taking apples off the tree and expect the tree to be uprooted. Jesus said, speak to the tree. Tell the tree to be uprooted. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. He told the tree to die and it died. And he didn't say, I wonder if the tree's going to die. He walked away knowing that the tree would be uprooted because what he did was he spoke to the root because he was believing and speaking the word. He said, I only say what I hear my father say, but we can't just practice it by way of action because we were not saved by our own actions. We were saved by grace through our faith, which is the foundation and the knowledge, the word that we heard the preacher say was revelation. We got revealed, it was revealed to us that Jesus Christ, which is the Son of God, was sent here that died on the cross and took the curse into his own body down below and rose again, resurrected. But the same spirit that lives in him resides in us. And that's the spirit that destroys the yoke of bondage, the bondage of sickness, disease, poverty and lack in our lives and even a lackful mindset when we think that we want to go higher but it's preventing us from wanting to go forward praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah the daily devotional says this parable teaches us about the foundational importance of living according to jesus words it challenges us to examine the foundation upon which we are building our lives. Reflect on your spiritual foundation and the ways in which you can further solidify your life on the teachings and examples of Jesus. What practical steps can you take to ensure your life is built on the rock and not on sand? One of the things that uh, when people, a lot of people, when they will hear this, when they will hear this, and we go to church or we go places and we talk about what practical things can we do. Well, it's important for us to know when the Bible talks about laboring, it does not mean go out and try to stop doing sin. It does not mean try to be a good person. It means labor in the word to get the revelation of the word because the word will set you free. The word says in Hebrews 4 that it's quick and active and it will do the work. 
So when you put the word in your heart, it will uproot the things. That's why faith is, is the first thing we do with our faith. It comes by hearing. First you hear. And then when you hear, you believe what you heard and then you speak it. And then when you speak it and you continue to that process, then action comes last. That's why it says faith without works is dead, but faith comes first. And so you can't do anything without faith. So if we have challenges in our lives, we need a word to set us free because the word is the thing that set us free initially. We didn't do anything to be saved and faith is the same. It's been dealt to every man, the measure of faith which is the foundation in which you build everything else on. But if you don't have a foundation of faith, then you can't do anything. You can't move, you're stuck. And in order to get faith, you need a revelation of the word and you don't need to just read the word. You need to study it and peel it apart and investigate and scrutinize and seek. He said, ask, seek, knock. Even those, A-S-K, even ask, seek, knock is still ask. He never said to try hard because he said the blessing is what makes it rich. It makes you prosperous in all areas of your life and it adds no sorrow. The word sorrow means toil or trying hard or struggle. The blessing of Abraham, Abraham didn't have to struggle. Abraham, it, his face was dealt to him as righteous. He was looked upon, God said, I see that as, I count that as righteousness because you have the faith. And so our faith is what the foundation is. So when it talks about having practical steps that we can take to ensure, the practical step would be what part of the word do I need to go to? Where in my life do I have an issue that I need to address in order for my life to begin to give glory to God? Because even if it's something just as sin is the first thing you overcome before you go up with God. So when you first deal with, with a sin problem, you go in Romans 6, 14, and you find out that sin actually has no dominion over you. So when it, when it says to idolize, when you're listening to whatever is speaking into you and telling you to do something, that's your God. Even if, even it doesn't have to be physical sin. It could be an idea. It could be when you're in traffic. This is a practice. It's a practice. And so when you meditate in the word, the word helps you to put into practice. The practice, the first thing you do is to speak to it. Speak to your problem. Speak to your bank account. Speak to it. And then the action shows up. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, so I'm going to come back. I haven't been able to see the comments, but uh, is there anyone would like to share? Any revelation you get you like to share? Any words you like to express? Praise the Lord. It's been so good. I'm just... So in the word. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, it's important that we, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so the more we hear the word, uh, one of the things that I've began to do is to read the word out loud to myself. Because if faith comes by hearing, and how will you hear without a preacher? And how will he preach unless he be sent? You were sent to you. God sent you to you. <laughs> you were called out of darkness. And he gave you the word. He sent you into the word. And now you speak the word over your own life. And so when we get the word, the more we meditate in that word, it will begin to set you free. Because one day you get a revelation of it. Meditating in the word means to utter it, means to imagine it. It means to picture it. It means to picture yourself doing it. When you see the word, you're picturing whatever it says 
first in your mind because how did God create? If we're made in his image and after his likeness, how did he create? Well, first he said God created. We're creators. And the first thing he did was pictured what he wanted and he spoke it into being. And so we'd move by that same process. So it's not by works, lest any man should boast. So the practical steps would be to get in the word and meditate on that word and put it into our eyes and put it into our ears because those are the keys or the doors to our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And as we meditate in that word, it's important and, and it's so important to get the word in you over and over and over and over because if you want to uproot something, that thing that's deep, deep, deep down in there is the thing you've heard over and over and over and over and over your whole life. I remember at one point I used to hear money don't grow on trees. Well, actually, that's a lie from the very pit of hell. <laughs> like it is literally a lie. Money actually does grow from trees <laughs> like it's paper and it actually is made from a tree. And so that's actually a lie that we've told ourselves that we believe you hear so many people misquote scripture when they say something like, you know, money is the root of all evil. No, it says the love of money. And it's because if you love money, then you're idolizing. The Bible says to love God, love your fellow man. And so when we, when we listen to the world, we've grown up in these things and we can't expect for instant overnight things to take place when we're meditating in the word and we're receiving the word, the word has to penetrate our hearts. Your heart is your spirit, man. And the, and the, the word has to go in there. And then it begins to transform the way you think because out of the abundance of the heart, then your mouth will speak. And if you overflow your heart with the word, then you have no choice but to speak what's in it. Glory to God. Yes, amen. That is so good. I tell you, God is so good. You know, I think it's so amazing how this is the process by which we live by faith. If we are the just and we live by faith and we live from faith to faith, most people don't have an understanding of how simple living in the kingdom and being a citizen of the kingdom of heaven really is. But because we've been programmed to this world, we get up and we go to work and we labor in the natural every single day and we do things and we worry about things. But if we were to labor in the word just as much, <laughs> then the revelation would come faster. We would we would awaken to the word. Revelation is when the word becomes alive in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I have a, um, is there anyone would like to share, uh, their, like their, their feedback on the devotional where it says, um, it asks what practical steps for us to reflect on the spiritual foundation and the ways in which we can further solidify our lives on the teaching and the examples of Jesus. Uh, what, what areas, I'm curious, in your life do you feel, and you don't have to answer, but meditate on this, what, life, what areas of your life can you give over to God? What areas of your life do you need an answer from the Lord? And what what are the things that you need to focus on in your life that that you've been putting off maybe that you have been not attending to and that God has not been getting glory in? What areas of your life do you feel have have had you bound in a way that you have not been able to release it and what practical steps can you take what are those scriptures what are the words 
that God has spoken about that area. Hallelujah. Well, for myself, when the Lord tells me something about a highly concerning situation in my life that I'm always like coming to him about like, oh my gosh, here we go again or something like that. And so the Lord just reminds me what he said about it the first time. And so it's just going to be me. Um, like having to allow the Lord to fortify my faith. And when I stand on that, it's like, okay, I'm much stronger. I agree. Um, I can totally resonate with that. Sometimes we hold on to things and um, we don't give the revelation of the word part, that rock. The rock isn't all the way there because we haven't got a full revelation in order to begin building, you know. So the foundation is the faith. And so we don't have, we're not at that point of being in full faith, you know. And I've been there. I mean, we, we always have the opportunity to worry about certain situations in our lives or um, because it's easy to look at the things that are seen. I mean, we, we walk in the world, we live in the world and it's, it's easy to be caught up in what we see. And so I believe that one of the biggest things the enemy challenges us is um, getting in the word. I mean, actually, the first practical step <laughs> is getting in the word and finding out what God says about the area that you're having challenges in and what does God believe about that area, you know, and how do I hand this over to you, Lord? Like, it's, it's such a pressing issue. How do I just give it to you? What does that look like? You know? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yes. And it, it can be a challenge to be like, you know, I know, Lord, that you said in your word that you was going to do this, but uh, I don't see no results right now. You know, it's easy. Yeah. There is less stress when we do that. There's a lot less stress. And, and you know, a lot of people, a lot of times we, we have held on to things for so long that it actually feels uncomfortable to just cast the care because we feel like, Sometimes casting the care feels like you're saying, I don't care. You're saying, I'm just going to let this go and nothing's going to be done about it. You know, I'm just going to just move on. And we, we sometimes get the tendency and we think about things that way. Unbearable to walking on. Yeah. Yes. It goes to clouds. Yes, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm so grateful that we have the opportunity to walk on clouds. You know, there's a lot of us as believers that we have the opportunity to walk on clouds, but we don't know how. We have the opportunity to have all of our needs and desires taken care of, but we don't always know how. It's a lot, and that's the challenge. When it says the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, they're not natural, but they're mighty or they're powerful through God. Well, God is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God, John 1, 1. So they're mighty through the word to the pulling down or the casting down or the striking down of strongholds. Strongholds are logic. It's natural reasoning. We stand on natural reasoning a lot of the time and we have all kinds of reasons why we do things, why we believe things. And those are strongholds. 
And the only thing that can break a stronghold or a belief system in our mind is the word of God that challenges that area. And that's where the work is because Satan comes for you, but he comes for you first in your mind by way of deception, images, pictures that he puts in your mind, ideas. You know? Thank you, Lord. I praise God, though, that he's given us the ability to discern. You know, with the word, we can discern. The word of God helps us to see. It helps us to have the light beneath our feet. He said that his word would be a lamp beneath our feet and that he would lead us in paths of, of green pastures. He would lead us beside the still waters. That's peace, that's shalom, that's wholeness. You know, and sometimes we have to ask ourselves, what does that look like? What are the practical steps that I can do today to make that reality for me? You know. One of my practical steps is I don't tr stress myself about getting in the word and reading the word. The word is something that you, you take with you all of your life. So what I do is I get up and I read. My goal is to read a chapter of the Bible a day. And in the Bible, I go and I break down scripture. Sometimes I might not make it through a full chapter, but I'll go and I'll get it. I'll find a scripture in that chapter and it'll just stick with me it'll stick with me and i'll just meditate on it lord what is yesterday I, I one of the things was dying to the flesh it says we walk not after the flesh but after the spirit i said lord what does that look like you know and that was my prayer for the day it was like lord reveal to me what it means to walk after the spirit reveal to me what it means to die to my flesh what does that mean, Father? Reveal that to me. And all day, I kept saying, what does it mean to walk after the Spirit? I'm walking after the Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that it's been revealed to me how to walk after the Spirit. What does it mean, Lord? And all day, God gave me revelation. All day, things would come up, and I would see something, and it would remind me of that same thing. I was challenged to read 39 chapters a day. Whoa. <laughs> Wait. Yikes. That's a real challenge. I, I, don't, I don't think I make it through a lot of the chapters because um, I can't make it through that many chapters a day because of the way that I break down the word. I like to read it in different translations. I'll find a scripture that I'll read and I'll stop at a scripture that really like, I'll be like, I don't understand what that says because God doesn't say anything things for nothing so I'll pull that scripture out and I'll say what does it say in this this version and what does it say in that version and then I'll go in the Hebrew and the Greek and I'll dissect it and see what these words mean and I feel like I'm just breaking it open and sometimes that'll lead me to another scripture that's clearly on the other side of the Bible and I'll just be like next thing I know I'm deep in it start with 10 yeah that's more that's still challenging <laughs> praise god though yeah but it's important that we're not just reading the word we have to study the word to show our it said the word says study to show yourself approved we have to study it you know that's how you get revelation out of it yes study that's how we get revelation anybody can read but why is it? It's hidden. The mysteries are to be uncovered. They're hidden. That means you have to really seek through the scriptures. You know, praise God, though, that we have the ability and we have the word in the palm of our hands. You know, that's amazing to me that when I first came into the word, I started hearing things like, therefore, do not worry about what you shall eat, what you shall drink and what you shall wear. I'm like, so sometimes I'm getting dressed for the day and I'm like, Lord, you said, don't worry about what I'm going to wear. So I expect you to pick out my outfit today. And it works. I mean, sometimes I'll get a picture in my mind. I'll, I'll leave it alone. I'll go take my daughter to school with whatever on and I'll come back and I'll have a picture in my mind of what to put on. And it turns out to be the perfect outfit for the day. And so we, we cast big stuff on the Lord, but the little things, if we practice it on a daily <laughs> 
then it'll become a habit, you know? <laughs> God pick out my outfit all the time. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Daily practice. Thank you. Yeah. Being with God is a practice. It's a relationship. I mean, I like to think of God, it's a relationship. It's like being married. Would you cheat on your husband? <laughs> like, would you cheat? Would you tell your husband, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I just want a break for a minute. Can we just see other people today? You know, can we just not talk today? Like, I don't really want to talk to you. <laughs> like, I mean, he's, he's, he's there with us. He wants a relationship. I mean, imagine having a child that, you have given birth to and they just never deal with you. They never talk to you. They never have conversations with you. You know, I think of it like that. And I say, you know, Lord, practical ways that I can create a relationship with you today is just randomly praying and talking throughout the day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that we have been given the opportunity to uh, have this relationship that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. We are not attached to the world. We are here as ambassadors of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Is there anyone that will anyone else that would like to share before I um close us out in prayer and pray around this word that we've heard? Um, anyone would like to share their practical steps and things that they are they plan to do to just ignite that intimacy with God to make sure that we're building our lives on a rock, the revelation of God's word. What kind of things can you do to get the word in you? to begin creating a relationship with God, you know, whether it be journaling, writing letters to God, whether it be, you know, laying down and just for the last 10 minutes before you go to sleep, having a conversation with the Lord, you know, there's so many ways that we can uh, communicate or commune or have intimacy with him. I'll share that um, I, my goal and my desire is to sit with him and not have, not have that urge to be doing something, just learning how to sit with him. So this time of consecration is helping me build that muscle um, because my challenge has been busyness. So that's one of the things that I am um, um, I'm heavily relying on him to break that in me and, and be able to just sit with him and not feel the need or urge to be doing something. Yes, 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 yes. I'm over here like, oh my gosh, yes. I can totally, so I think a lot of us can totally relate to that. I mean, and that's, I mean, that's, that's, um, I feel like a part of the challenge. I think that's a beautiful thing to be able to just take that time to sit with God and just let him minister to you, you know, a lot of us can be challenged with Martha syndrome. I like to call it busyness. Yes. Like, got to do this, got to do this, got to do that, got to do this. But in order to have, you have to do. But in order to do, you have to be. 
And so first we have to remind ourselves, like, I'm a child of God. I can relax, you know, and have those moments to just relax and be with him. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, God has such a sweet, sweet presence. When we relax in just his presence, you find shalom in his presence. You know, you get so much revelation just by sitting with him. Because the revelation of your identity is the most important revelation to have because everything else is built on that. You know, us being the sons of God, daughters of God, children of the living God, and his love, his love for us. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for sharing. Uh, and um, Sherry said, I have found out the importance of the word of God in prayer mixed. Yes. Oh, Lord. Yes. It is so important that we pray the word of God. Pray the word. Pray the word. If you have a, a concern or something you want to pray about, find what the word says about it and pray the word. You can never go wrong. He said, Jesus was the perfect example for us. He said, I only say what I hear my father say. Prayer is, you know, there's different types of prayer, but that's how God gets his kingdom into the earth is by first, by way of our mouths. Like we have to say something, you know, even, even I got such a revelation of this, like, um, and I'll, I'll be honest, I'll be transparent in my finances. Uh, I ha I was, I felt like I was stuck in a, in an area where my business wasn't really moving, where things were kind of feeling stuck or static. And I got a revelation of speaking and I was praying, Lord, you know, uh, you said in your word that you would you know, heal my finances. You said that you would provide. You said that you would do this, Lord. I pray that, you know, you, you said your word says that you are not a man that you shall lie, but I, you know, I, I believe I receive it and nothing was happening. And I'm like, okay, so I know God is not a liar. So it, it has to be me. It's something that I have to make an adjustment on. And uh, I was in church one day and my pastor said, we got to speak to the mountain. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, I need to speak to the money. I said, money, come into me. Money, get in my bank account right now in the name of Jesus. You have a job to do. And I command that you show up in the name of Jesus. Bank account, be made whole and be full and be an overflow in the name of Jesus. And it, it felt like a relief. Like it felt like I had got something to say. I was just like declaring over and talking to the thing, talking to the money, talking to the thing. And the next day, I kid you not, that very next morning at 9 a.m., I had a, a request on my email that said I had a new client. I was like, I was, it just tickles you. But we have to be an expectation. Like we have to learn how to operate as kingdom citizens. And that doesn't just happen instantly when you're saved. You're saved and your spirit is renewed and you're made whole, but you still have to have a renewal in your mind and your will and in your emotions. So your decisions are still going to be the same. Your thoughts are still going to be the same and you're still going to feel the same. But that's why we have to get in the word and be renewed in our minds so that we can start thinking differently. Because I'm telling you, when I first started, it sounds silly to talk to myself or talk to my money. It just felt silly. Like, why am I talking to things? But that's what God said to do. He said, speak to the tree, speak to the mountain, tell it to be thou removed. Not God, can you move the mountain? He said, tell the mountain, be thou removed. Jesus spoke to the storm. He spoke to the wind. He spoke to stuff. 
I have formed this habit of listening to acts on my way to Monday night prayer at my church. I can't explain it, but what I've noticed is that the prayer flows. Yes. Yes. Kingdom principles. Yes. Yes. It's not, it's not hard. We just have to pour the word in, like meditate in the word day and night. Listen to it. When you go to sleep, turn on a sermon. I listen to sermons all day. I put my headphones in when I'm in public and I got a sermon plan and not just any sermon. I listen to it in the area where I need change in my life. So if I'm in a financial season where I want increase in my business or increase in my finances, I'm listening to prosperity, preaching about money, how to increase God's promises about money. I'm listening to that. If I'm sick, I'm listening and I'm taking the word says that the word is medicine. It brings health to your body. It's medicine to your flesh. I listen to med- uh, healing scriptures. I meditate on healing sermons. Whatever I need, the word is the seed. <laughs> Yes, come on. Yeah, praise the Lord. Would anyone else like to share? This is good, y'all. This is good. God is good. I feel like I've had more joy in my life than I've had all my life. Now, at one point, I was like, not happy. I didn't know how to be happy. I didn't know how to find happiness. And God literally his presence just learning who God is has changed me as a person and I no longer desire the things that I used to you know I no longer feel the ways that I used to and sometimes just being in the word brings peace to my spirit makes me feel safe thank you Lauren So I don't want to cut nobody off. If no one else has anything, I will go ahead and pray us out. This has been good. I don't know if it's been good for you, but it's blessed me. This word was for me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time that we have spent together. We thank you for the word that has come forth. We thank you, Lord, that we have been uh, presented before you almost as babes in Christ, Father, where we are just renewed and excited about your word as if it's the first time that we heard it, Lord. We thank you that we have the opportunity to take practical steps, Lord, to get to know you. We thank you, Lord, that there is an intimacy that we have to tap into and that we are not in the world as others are, but we are protected by your word, that we are covered by your word, that your word covers us in every area and that you always have an answer for everything. I thank you, Lord, that there is an answer, that there is a blessing in every area of our lives and it's available to us if we will just put the practical steps to use and dig into your word and actually spend time with you. Father, you are your word, your character is in your word. Your covenant is in your word. There is protection in your word. There is wealth in your word. There is healing in your word. There is um, love in your word, God. There is relationships in your word, God. And so we just thank you that all that we need, everything that we need, you are father. We thank you, Lord, that all that we are trying to be, all that we are pursuing in our lives, you have predestined in us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that when Jesus died on the cross, that all these things were made available to us, that we no longer are attached to the curse, but that we are empowered to prosper. I pray that every person under the sound of my voice would begin to get a deeper revelation of their identity in you, Father, that the assignment would be awakened, Father, in the name of Jesus, that their mountain would be revealed to them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that they would get more revelation of the word so that they may ascend higher, that any area of their lives, Lord, where they need you, Father, where you are not getting glory, where you are not being glorified, Father, that you would give them the word that would set them free, Lord, that you would reveal to them that which you desire to be in, Father. I pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit would dwell with them tonight, Lord, that they would have sweet sleep, 
God, that your spirit would dwell in their minds, dwell in their hearts and bring peace throughout their entire being, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you are our shepherd. Your word says that we shall not want, we shall not want, meaning we shall not lack, we shall not decrease, we shall not go backward, Lord. We thank you that sin has no dominion over us, that the enemy has no dominion over us, that we have victory over it. And so I come against the spirit of condemnation, any place that we may have missed it, Lord, in the name of Jesus, any place that we may have turned away from your word, God, in the name of Jesus, any time that we may have lacked to get into your word on our own, Father, in the name of Jesus. I come against the condemnation, Lord. I thank you that you are a God of correction, that we have the ability to recover, Lord, that you that you hold nothing against us, Lord, that there is no guilty verdict, but we have been justified by you, Lord. And that was a gift because you love us. And so we thank you for your love because your love covers a multitude of sins, Lord. Anything that we have done and said, that wasn't according to your word, any place that we have doubted you, Lord, for doubt is a sin. We desire to be in righteous, right standing with you and doubt, doubt does not exist within us. We do not doubt your word in any area that we've been challenged with doubt. Any time that we felt like you didn't, you couldn't do it or you wouldn't do it for us. We come against that right now in the name of Jesus. We know that you desire to do good to us. You are desperate to do good to your people because we are a funnel to bless the world. You need us to be prosperous in every area. You need us to be whole. You need us to be healed. You need us to be wealthy, Lord, so that we can get the blessing into the earth, Lord, just as you did with Abraham. And so we thank you that we are the chosen ones. We thank you that you have called us. You have chosen us. The word was made available to us, our generations, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And so we thank you that we walk according to your word. We thank you, Lord, that that word has been made available to us and that it makes things available to us. And so today we pray, Lord, that as we go forward into this, this weekend, this week, and as we go forward from this moment, Father, that we are new in your word, that you will give us a fresh anointing that will fall upon us tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus that you will give us a hunger in the pit of our bellies for your word in the name of Jesus, and that we would be reunited in relationships, that we would be united with those who are aligned with the mission that you have called us to, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the divine resources to complete the mission, Father, that you have assigned us to. And we praise you, Father, for sisterhood. We thank you for love. We thank you that you have brought us together as the body of Christ, to bring about change in this world, Father, thy kingdom come, your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. It's been awesome, Trey. Thank you. I love you guys. Mm -hmm. I love you all so much. Love you too. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. It's my pleasure. <laughs>